Hello and welcome to this video about effective charges. These are the electric charges that can be mathematically substituted for an object's polarization. The surface charge density is the distribution of this charge over the surface area of an object, while the volume charge density is its distribution inside the object. These are given by the equations at the bottom. The unit n vector is the unit vector that is perpendicular to the surface of the object. P is the polarization of the object that is a function of the position of a certain point in space. A good example is a thin electrically polarized rod as shown which can be substituted for by two charged disks shown underneath it. Cylindrical coordinates will be used. Unit K is the axis vector which is always constant and doesn't change with position. Unit S is the vector that faces away from the axis and is the unit normal vector to any cylinder with the axis as shown. It changes with position but can be worked with like I, J and K. Unit C is the circulating vector which always has the direction to rotate around this cylinder. The first example is to substitute charges for a polarized bar as shown. It has a uniform polarization of P0 in the direction I. We will only show the surface charge density for one surface here called A to illustrate how to calculate a surface charge density. The I and J unit vectors are as shown. The surface A is tilted at an angle of theta to the horizontal. The unit normal vector N is also shown here. The first thing to do when solving this problem is to use the surface charge density equation shown. The value of the polarization is equal to P0 which is constant and not dependent on its position in space and is in the direction given by the unit vector I. The unit normal vector n for surface A is given by this expression and is dependent on the angle theta. It can be easily calculated using geometry. Substituting these values into the first expression gives this expression for the surface charge density. It is a dot product of two vectors. Using the rules for a dot product gives us this result here. The surface charge density is proportional to sine theta. Here is another bar with the tilted surface at the top rather than the side and having an angle called beta that is smaller than theta. The surface charge density is P0 times sine beta. It isn't the location of the surface that determines its charge density but only its angle that the surface tilts with respect to the polarization of the object. Here is an example of a polarized cylinder. The surface charge density is to be calculated for all the surfaces as well as the volume charge density inside it. Starting with surface A having the end colored cyan or glow light blue we use the equation shown, which is a sort of definition equation. The polarization is P0 in the direction given by the K unit vector. The normal vector for surface A is minus unit K, as can be easily seen. The surface normal of A is opposite to the polarization vector of the object. Plugging these values into the first equation gives this expression, which is a dot product. Using the rules of dot products, unit k times unit minus k equals negative 1, leaving minus p0 as the answer. On surface B, the other end of the cylinder, hidden from view, the calculation is the same, but the unit normal vector of B is positive unit K. A and B face in opposite directions 
and their surface normal vectors are opposite to each other. Plugging these two values into the first equation gives this expression, which gives this answer. The two k unit vectors multiply together to make one, leaving the answer to be p zero. Moving now to surface C, which is the curved surface of the cylinder, the calculation is the same as the other two until we get to its surface normal vector, which is easily given by unit S in cylindrical coordinates. Plugging these values into the equation at the top gives us this expression. Because K and S are always perpendicular to each other, then multiplying them together will give an answer of zero. To get the volume charge density, we use the following equation. Substituting the value of P into it gives us this expression. And because P0 is constant in all of space, then its divergence is zero. Here is an example of a polarized solid cylinder that will give a non-zero volume charge density. The polarization is a function of Z that is written here and isn't constant. We plug this equation for P into the charge density equation as shown. This will give the following answer as shown here. Here is another example of a polarized solid cylinder with a non-zero volume charge density. Its polarization function is shown in red. And after plugging the values in, we arrive at this answer as shown. Now we'll look at another type of solid, the polarized sphere. It has a constant polarization of P0 in the I direction everywhere inside it. To calculate its surface charge density, we first invoke this equation, which is its definition. This is the value of P that we'll plug into it. If we pick a point A on its surface, it will have an angle theta with the center as shown. The component of its normal vector that is in the same direction as P, which is direction I, is cosine theta. So the surface normal vector may be written out like this, having a cosine theta term for its direction I, and having arbitrary amounts of A and B in directions J and K. It doesn't matter what A and B are, since they will be discarded by the dot product rule anyway, but they do all obey Pythagoras' rule as shown below. So plugging these two values in for P and N gives us this dot product equation. So that A and B get discarded and the surface charge density is equal to the equation shown in the box. The concept of effective charge may be extended to include other types of charge, like for example magnetic charge. Even though magnetic dipole charges have not been found and are believed to not exist, effective magnetic charge can exist and can be calculated using these equations for a magnetized iron rod. The effective magnetic vector potential charge can be found too. Even though this quantity is fairly elusive and the quantity itself only barely exists theoretically and can't be measured, its effective charge can be found at the ends of a long tube that conducts a constant magnetic vector potential caused by magnetic fields that circulate around this tube. 